This video is about answering the questions on the algebra tutorial. So we go tutorials, algebra, and then the questions are generated for you. Now let's do question 1a. It says simplify the following expression and it tells us to state the problem, collect like terms, and then give your answer. So the first thing we'll do is to copy and paste the question and then I'll say am I right and it says yes am I right but I've not completed the answer it requires three lines so we'll go on to the next line and say that that is equal to the expression here what I've done here is I've gathered the similar terms and I've ordered the variables alphabetically Babbage doesn't require you to do that but I find it's easy to see which which are like terms so we've got for instance a TR here We've got, for instance, we've got an ST here and a TS here, and I've changed them to ST and ST. So now it's easy to see which terms are the same, so we can then add them together to get our final answer. And am I right? Yes, I am. Whilst we're here, let's just have a look at the syntax. If I click on syntax, we're now presenting our data in a language called LaTeX. I know it looks like latex, but actually it's pronounced latex. You see the E, because we're not changing the variable, we can just use the equal signs that we've got here. So this is what our answer looks like when it's rendered in latex. Questions 1b, c and d are similar to question 1a. Question 2. Expand the following expressions, and it says state the problem, expand the innermost bracket, then the next innermost bracket, and so on and it's expecting four lines in your answer. So we'll start by copying and pasting the problem. And then the first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to copy that, um, but I'm going to take away the, the innermost bracket. So I'm going to multiply 5r minus 4 by 2r. So we'll get rid of that bracket. And 5r times 2r is going to give me 10r squared and then minus 4 times 2 is going to give me 8r and that's expanded the first bracket so we've got 10r squared minus 8r plus 3 um, and we could check that now so the line is okay and now I'm going to copy this line because that's the one I'm going to work on next so I'll paste that there so I'm now going to take away the next bracket so I'm multiplying 10r squared and so on by 4r, so I'm going to get 48r cubed, um, 8 times 4 is minus 32r squared, plus 12r, plus 5. Okay, and am I right? So far so good. Now I'm going to copy this line. And we're actually going to get rid of all the brackets now, so we're going to, so I can lose those. So it's 40r cubed times 2r, so that's going to be 80r to the power of 4. And then it's minus 32 times 2, so it's going to be minus 64r cubed. Then 12 times 2 is going to be 24r squared. And then we've got 5 times 2, so that's going to be 10r minus 3. OK, and are we right? No, we're not. Oh, I put a dollar in there. That should have been a four, shouldn't it? OK, are we right now? Yes, we are, and we've got the tick. Question 2b, 2c, and 2d are all similar to 2a. So question 3, write the following expression in standard form. Now, standard form is descending powers of x. So we've got a quadratic here times a linear term here, which means that we're going to get a cubic equation. What Babbage is expecting on the second line is all of the terms in the bracket. Now we've got three terms in the first bracket and we've got two terms in the second bracket. So there will be six terms on the second line of your answer. And then we can collect like terms and, and, and then simplify. So we'll start by stating the problem. So I'll copy the question and paste that in and if I say am I right it will say no we're wrong this line is wrong because the carrot the thing that says it's a power doesn't actually copy over so if I put that in and say am I right now I now it is right okay so I'm going to 
do this in descending powers of x. So that is going to equal 4x squared times x, so that's going to be 4x cubed. And then I've got 4x squared times 2, so that's going to be plus 8x squared. And I've got minus 2x times x, so then I'm going to have minus 2x squared. Then I'm going to get the x terms, which is um, minus 2x times 2, so that's going to be minus 4x. And I've got 6 times x, so that's going to be plus 6x. And then I've got 6 times 2, which is going to be plus 12. Now let's just check that. We've got 1, 2, 3 terms here. We've got 2 terms here. 3 times 2 is 6. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms. So that's looking OK. We can check now. Am I right? Yes, we are. And then finally, we're going to collect the common terms. So we've got 4x cubed. And we've got 8x squared minus 2x squared, so that's going to be plus 6x squared. Then we've got 4x, minus 4x plus 6x, so that's going to be plus 2x, and then plus 12. And am I right? Yes, I am. OK, question 3b is similar to question 3a. So question 3, have a cubic over a linear term. So the question says, state the problem, factorise the numerator, and then give your answer in standard form. So let's start by copying and pasting the question. And remember we need to put the carrots in to show where the powers are. And am I right? So this is OK, but obviously the answer's not right yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the Casio 991 to factorise this cubic equation. So if I fire up my Casio, and move on to equation and then it's a polynomial and then it's a cubic and then I've got 80 xe 316 xe 54 xe minus 252 xe and then if I click xe again I've now got the first term so this expression is going to equal the first term, so x is equal to minus 7 over 2. So 2x plus 7 is equal to 0. So one of my factors is 2x plus 7. Then I go to the next factor. So I've got x is equal to 3 over 4. So 4x minus 3 equals 0. So that's going to be 4x minus 3. And then I've got the final term which is going to be x is equal to minus 6 over 5 so 5x plus 6 is equal to 0 so we put 5x plus 6 having got our three factors let's do a quick check to make sure this is correct we've got 2x times 4x which is going to give us 8x squared 8x squared times 5x is actually going to give us 40x cubed but look, that's 80x cubed, not 40x cubed. So actually, we need to put a 2 in here to make sure that that comes out as 80x cubed. And then we're going to divide that by 5x plus 6. If we forgot the 2, let's take that out and say, am I right? Then we get a bad here, because obviously the second line is not equal to the first line. And if we put the 2 back in and we expand it, then the line is correct. So we can then just copy and paste the last bit and say, am I right? And yes, we are. You could also express this in standard form. So let's just do that. 2x times 4x is 8x squared. So that's And there's a 2 outside. So that's going to give us, let's put it here, 16x squared. Then we've got... 2x times minus 3, so that's minus 6x. And we've got 7 times 4x, which is 28x. 28x minus 6x is 22x times the 2, so that's going to be plus 44x. And then finally, we've got 7x times minus 3, which is minus 21. There's the 2 outside, so that's going to be minus 42. And that's in standard form, so let's get rid of the previous answer. And am I right? And the answer is yes. 3D is similar to 3A. So moving on to question 4. 
factorize the following expressions. So let's start by stating the problem. Don't forget the carrots. And am I right? Yep, so far so good. So as before, I'm going to use the Casio to solve the problem because see here it says give the roots in the form of x1 is equal to x2 is equal to x3 is equal to and also notice the underscore there I'll show you what that means in a second so let's go back to the calculator home equations polynomial cubic equation and we've got 3 32 69 and 40 press it again and there's my first root so so the next line is going to be x1 is equal to minus 8 am I right yep that's good it, it's accepted that as an answer so we're now going to get x2 is equal to click on the calculator minus 1 okay minus 1 and then we're going to get x3 is equal to click on the calculator minus 5 over 3 so we'll put that in as is so it's minus 5 divided by 3 okay am I right yep so far so good and then the final thing is give your answer as the product of three factors okay so we know now go back to y is equal to we'll take the first one x is equal to minus 8 so that's a root and the factor is x plus 8 x plus 8 is the factor on the second one x is equal to minus 1 so x plus 1 is the factor and on the final one we've got x is equal to minus 5 over 3 so 3x plus 5 is the factor so 3x plus 5 is the factor and then as a quick check we'll multiply the first terms together so x times x times 3x is 3x cubed which is what we've got there and then we'll multiply the last terms together so we've got 8 times 1 times 5 is going to be 40 which is what we've got there so I'm pretty confident this answer is right am I right yes I am okay question 4b is similar to that question 4c I'll do question 4c so now we've got a fourth order polynomial divided by a linear polynomial so we'll start by stating the problem Don't forget the carrots. Sounds like a shopping list, doesn't it? Am I right? Yeah, that's okay. And now we're going to use the Casio to factorize the polynomial. So we'll go home equation polynomial quartic. And then we've got 392. 133 minus 337 minus 33 and finally 45 yeah. okay xe press xe again and there's our first term so we're going to get x1 is equal to 5 over 7 am i right yep okay so x Two is equal to click on the calculator 3 over 8 so 3 divided by 8 x3 is equal to minus 3 over 7 and x4 is equal to minus 1 minus 1 so am I right so far so good okay let's let's just drag this down a bit so we can see the whole of the question so if we look at these roots x2 is equal to 3 over 8 so that means the factor is 8x minus 3 and if you look at the denominator that's also 8x minus 3 which means that I can now write the solution as a product of three factors so we say y is equal to the first one is x is equal to 5x over 7 so 7x minus 5 is the factor 
the second one cancels with the denominator so we now get the third one so we've got x is equal to minus 3 over 7 so 7x plus 3 is the factor and then the final one x is equal to minus 1 so the factor is x plus 1 we just check the coefficients so we've got 7x times 7x times x is 49x cubed here we've got 392x to the fourth but if we divide that by 8x 8 goes into 39 four times remainder 7 and then 8 goes into 72 nine times so that's okay and then the final bit is 45 divided by minus 3 is going to give me minus 15 and I've got minus 5 times 3 times 1 is minus 15 so I'm pretty sure that answer is correct so am I right yes I am okay and 4d is similar to 4b question 5 is about algebraic manipulation um, they they're all the same but with slightly more complicated expressions each time so let's take the first one um, it says make either subject of v equals ir which I'm sure you recognize as Ohm's law now Babbage is case sensitive so if you say v equals ir for example that will be wrong so it needs to be capital you need to respect the case of the variables in the question so v equals ir is the question and it's uh, saying make i the subject of that so we can say that i is equal to v divided by r am I right yes I am the other questions are similar in that you've got to make specific variables the subject just by algebraic manipulation and that is how you do the algebra tutorial <laughs>